Hey, welcome everybody to yet another FP101X episode. You may have heard the um, saying that developers are people that turn coffee into code. Well, I'm a developer, I turn coffee into code, and in my case, also uh, bananas. Um, but here is a um, string of cup, coffee cups. But, you know, if you look at them like this, this is, looks like one object. But what we want is we don't want to have like one object, we want to parse this thing into a sequence of cups of coffee that we can drink such that we can code better. All right, so here you see that I'm taking this thing that was one thing and destructing it into its true meaning, namely a whole bunch of coffee cups that you can see right here. Um, and what we're going to show you in this lecture, how to not parse uh, strings of coffee cups, but we're going to parse strings of characters into expressions. All right? So let's get going. What is a parser? A parser is a program that analyzes a piece of text to determine its syntactic structure. So if we start with two times three plus four, what we want is we want to have this three that says it's two times three plus four. And again, last time I'll show my string of coffee, coffee cups. Here you see on the left, this is just an unstructured thing. And then on the right, what we get is the real structure, namely that it's the coffee cups that we're after. Okay? So the thing on the left has no structure and the parser is trying to extract this structure from that string. And one of the nice things um, of Haskell, and in particular Haskell lists, is that it's quite um, nice to write parsers, and it's quite elegant. So, and then it seems that every Haskell programmer at one point in her career will write a parser. Let's look at the type of parsers. Um, Let's formalize that. So here we have a function from string to trees, right? That picture that we showed took a string and turned that into a tree. So we just defined a type synonym here, parser. That's a function that takes a string and returns a tree. Now, we're going to generalize this type a little bit um, to, to make it easier to construct a parser. So first of all, um, when we parse a string, we might not need the complete string. So there might be some string left over. Maybe you know, with our um, string of coffee cups, after two or three cups of coffee, you know, we might get some heartburn or we might be a little bit too hyped up. So there will be some coffee cups left. All right, so the type of parsers, uh, we're going to refine that a little bit and we say it will take a string and it will return a pair of a tree and the rest of the string. Now, what we can also do in general is that when we take a string, it can be parsed in many ways. Okay, there's not a unique way if the, if the grammar is ambiguous. Or maybe, um, you know, this string cannot be parsed into a tree. Um, and in that case, um, what we want to do is we want to return a list of pairs of trees and strings. Okay, so these are all the possible ways that I can parse this string into a pair of a tree and the remainder of the string. Um, and that list can be empty in case there is no parse, or if it's ambiguous, um, it can uh, contain many pairs, or if it's, an, if it's a non-ambiguous grammar, it will either be a list that has a single element or the empty list. Um, by the way, that's another Haskell idiom. In Haskell, we often use lists where other languages would use the maybe type. So maybe type is something that's either nothing or a single value, 
and the list can be zero, one, or more values. Um, in Haskell, it's very com um, common to just use list for both. Um, and the reason is that, you know, you can use all the list operators quite easily um, when you use lists. Um, but if you're super uh, statically typed, then, you know, it's not as precise. But I, I like the fact, so I always typically use list. I, I'm not a big fan of uh, using maybe type. All right? So now the next thing is that really it doesn't matter whether we want to return a tree or not. So we're going to parameterize the type parser over A. And A can be tree, it can be whatever, we don't care. So the final type of parser takes a string and returns a list of pairs of A, that's the value that we're trying to extract from the string, and the rest of the string that we don't use. Okay, and in this case, um, as I mentioned, we're going to keep things really simple and we're going to only consider parsers that either succeed with a single value or fail with an empty value. So this list, if the parse succeeds, will always be a singleton list, but we're not going to use the maybe type, right? You can, yeah, if you, if you love the maybe type, you can take this uh, chapter and rewrite everything using the maybe type. Um, but I think what you will discover is that it's not more elegant than using lists. And in fact, I think lists, the code with lists will be more elegant. All right, now in order to build complicated parsers, what we're going to do is we're going to co first create simple parsers. And here's the simplest parser that we can imagine that will just parse a single character, okay? So this is a parser that will take a string and return a pair of a character and the rest of the string. Now, if the input string is empty, well, then I cannot extract a, a, a character from that string. So the only thing I can do is return the empty list. But if the input is of the form x cons x's, then I can take the pair of the first character and the rest of the string and return the singleton list of the result. Now notice here that we are not using kind of pattern matching on the left hand side, so we don't define item here using two clauses, but we're using a lambda expression with a case expression that has the pattern matching. So this is the first time that we've seen this syntactic construct um, in use, um, and also I must say I like this very much, because again it conveys that a parser is a function that takes the input and returns a list of pairs. And here you can also see that it really returns either a empty list or a singleton list. Okay, what is another simple parser that we can imagine? Oh, that's a parser that always fails. Um, what is the parser that always fails? Well, for any input, it returns the empty list. And then, if we have the parser that always fails, we also need the parser that always succeeds. But if we want the parser that always succeeds, we need to give it a value um, with which it can succeed. So the parser that always succeeds takes a value v, then it takes the input, it doesn't do anything with the input, it just returns that value v with the input unchanged in a singleton list, right? And for reasons that we will see um, later is that this parser that always succeeds is called return. And that has everything to do with the M word. Oh, the M word, and now my whole slides got all confused because I mentioned the M word, so be very careful people, when you mention the M word, because things will go spooky. Good, so that was the parser that always succeeds, the parser <laughs> that always fails, um, and now we can look at some more interesting parsers. So how do we take two parsers and combine the results? So it's kind of, you know, we want to try this parser, and if that succeeds, um, we're done, 
and otherwise we want to try that parser. Okay, so how do we find that? Well, we take these two parsers, we define a function, a new parser, which is a function that takes the input, we try to parse the input using the first parser, if that fails, it will return the empty list, in which case we try the second parser on the input. And if the first parser succeeds, it will succeed with a singleton list of a value and a remainder of the input, and we just return that same value. All right? So this thing here first tries parser P. If it fails, it will try parser Q, but if parser P succeeds, it will just return the result of that. And then, finally here, we want to have a function that takes a parser and a string and then applies that parser to the string. So here we get a function from string to a list of A and string. And, well, it just applies the parser to the input. All right, good. Let's um, open up GHC and um, check out the behavior of our parsers. So let's uh, take um, the uh, simple parser and then try to parse um, uh, the, uh, uh, something from the empty string. Uh, that doesn't work. Now let's try to parse the first value from the string ABC. Well, in this case we can extract uh, the first uh, character from the string, and what you will see is that it will return the list containing a pair of the first value of the string, the first character, and the rest of the string. Uh, this is just as we define. So we verify here that our definition of the item parser works as expected. Uh, let's try the parser that always fails. So the parser that always fails, whatever input we give it, it should fail, should return the empty list. So let's give it the input ABC, and yes, boom, it returns the empty list. Let's try the parser that always succeeds, and in this case the parser that always succeeds with the number one. We apply that to the string ABC, and guess what? It succeeds by returning the value one and leaving the input unchanged. Okay, now let's try to parse an item, and if that fails, we immediately return D. So we use the parser that always succeeds. Uh, let's do this on ABC. Well, since we can get the first element of ABC, that will succeed, so we will just get the result ABC. All right? And now, um, the last example here is we try the parser that always fails, and if it fails, we will try the parser that always succeeds. Well, this will fail. This will succeed, and it will succeed by not consuming any input, but just returning D, and that's exactly what GHCI will verify for us. All right, the uh, parsing library, by the way, is available um, uh, from the uh, Haskell homepage. Um, notice that this parsing is very simple, there's many, many uh, more um, advanced parsing libraries out there. And as I mentioned, the parser type here that we have shown is an example of a monad, and you know, you, you noticed when I mentioned the word monads, my uh, clicker here went completely berserk. Um, so there's nothing really special about monads. It's just a type that has certain operations on it. So don't make a big deal of it, uh, because when you make a big deal of it, you will get into trouble like I did. All right, thanks. Let's take a short break and see you um, after the break for part two on parsers. <laughs>